Shalom. We are we are tonight um, doing the third of a of a series on on shiurim on halachic measurements, and um, and tonight we're actually on stage on stage two. The first two shiurim we discussed whether the topic of shiurim of halachic measurements is a biblical level or a rabbinic level uh, topic. And uh, it involved resolving some seemingly contradictory sources. Uh, the simple thing, according to a couple of the more well-known sources, are that she urim are Allah Moshe Misinai. On the other hand, which is clearly biblical. On the other hand, there's there's uh, there's a, uh, a Gemara and Brachos, according to one Girsa, says that she urim are there's a uh, a Gemara in Yoma that implies that only Shirim about punishments are are uh, are Allah Moshe Misinai, and there is a um, there is a Yerushalmi which clearly says that Shirim are are uh, Midrabanan that Shitas Rav Yona and Rav Asher Weiss's uh, resolution. Again, there were there were a number of other resolutions in the in the Achronim. Uh, but what we saw last week was Rav Asher Weiss that shiurim are Allah Moshe Misinai, but nimsar hadavra lechachamim was given over to the chachamim to determine exactly which shir is for which is for which thing. Uh, and there's some sources that are very hard to escape on that. One of them, for instance, is that uh, chachamim were mishair that a koseves hagasa that that date was the size that is miyashiv dato shaladam that settles a person so that it's no longer considered inui on Yom Kippur, it's no longer considered afflicting yourself. It sounds like the Chachamim determined that shir. But if the shirim, that's one of the things that's listed as Allah HaLemoshim Yisinai shir. So again, his approach uh, resolves it well. Okay, now, now we're going to get to the, the nitty gritty, which is uh, today and, and next week, God willing, We'll learn about the big, the big, big machlokis uh, amongst the achronim about how to calculate halachic measurements. And to, today, God willing, we'll see the core sources. And next week, God willing, we'll discuss why, uh, why there's a big machlokis about this topic uh, amongst, uh, amongst the post scheme. The most pronounced being, of course, the Chazonish and Rav Avram Chaim Noah, but uh, it predates both of them. Okay. Um, Rav Akos, can I just ask one question? By all means. So, what, as a fundamental question, why not start out with a, an actual measurement that is like empirical and work from there rather than like from Kabaitsa, Kazai? Oh, whatever? oh, oh. You, you, uh, your issue is addressed directly by a responsa, a responsum during the period of the Gaonim. And right. that will be one of our early sources. Right. So God willing, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll get an answer to that question. Okay. This is the way the article looks. The Rav Asher Weiss, uh, has, has a, uh, a tshuva on this, a six or seven part tshuva. Uh, in his responsum, this is the third section. Um, last time we were building on an article in the Minchas Asher on, on Parsha Sekev, Eretz Chita Oseora, and uh, this year and next year, next year, God willing, we'll be dealing, we'll be building on this, um, this, uh, um, this shuva. We are still, again, we're still calling it the Achronim Chabura, but. Uh, we are uh, these last two. He he uh, he guides us through the sources on this topic. Okay, um, there's a there's a mission of Maseches Kelim, which which discusses different shiur and different halachic measurements. Again, it, it opens up with a with a measurement that that is relevant for Kelim about the size of a pomegranate. But then it goes through three of the more well-known shiurim, Kabeza, Kigrogeras, that's for Hilchos Shabbos, and Kezayis. And it says, it, it tells us how to, how to 
how to determine how big a kibetza is. Now again, kibetza, the size of a beta, that's for instance for Tumas Ochlim, uh, for what size of uh, food is uh, is uh, is makabel tuma is is uh, susceptible to tuma tuma. Um, we use kibetza also for birkas hamazon. It's considered a, a shear of kadei svia, the amount that is satiating. Um, so so says the Mishnah. Kabetza shamru that beta that egg that they said lo gadola lo ktana ela benunis. Not big, not small, but but average. Again, I said average, but you'll see that it, that's not exactly accurate. It's a it's a it's a benunis. I'm going to say benunis in English, in Hebrew. Rabbi Yehuda Omer may vi gadola shabegdolos, uktana shabegtanos, venosin lasochamayim, vecholekas hamayim. What do you do? You take two eggs, your biggest egg, your smallest egg, the biggest of the big eggs, the smallest of the small eggs, and then you put both in a full container of water. You see how much is displaced. And then you divide the quantity of displaced water into two. So it would follow, let's say that we have a big, a big uh, egg that is, uh, that is uh, um, uh, 60, that's 70, 70 milliliters, and a small one that is uh, 40 milliliters. So you would have a grand total of, of 110, and then you would come up with 55. That's the way it would work out. Um, the biggest of the big, now that's a median. If I've got the name the names correctly in Hebrew, it's called a chetzion, which I learned last night as I was talking this over with a friend of mine, Yossi. Um, speaking of Rabbi Yossi, I'm Rabbi Yossi. Vechimimo dieni eza gadolav eza ketana. Who's going to tell me what's the biggest and what's the smallest? Ella, rather hakol afi dato shalroe. Everything is according to the judgment of the one who's looking at it. Meaning, what Rabbi Yossi seems to be saying is. A person who who has been eating eggs all his life, and he sees eggs all the time, and so he picks up an egg that that is in his eyes a uh, uh, benoni egg. So, rather as opposed to Rabbi Yehuda, who says, "Get the biggest of the big and the smallest of the of the small, and then find the median." Rabbi Yossi ends up doing something which is which is using judgment. And coming up with, I would assume, is not a median of a, the size of an egg, but an average size egg. Meaning, because a person has seen hundreds of eggs in his life, he knows what's the average size egg. Okay, and then you have a similar mission about Grogeris and a similar mission about Kazayas, Logado, Lokatana, Labanan, Isiagori, etc., and then a Kisora, etc., Kaadasha, all the different Shiurim here. And um, the theme that is um, following through the, that they're all, that the shear is benunis, this this middle level shear, and then we have a machlok as Rabbi Yehuda and the Chach and Rabbi Yossi about how to calculate. Now, based on that, if I would want to figure out um, whether whether I should make a, a an alamechia over cake. So the Chorah, the way to go to an alamichia, the way to figure out an alamichia over cake would not be to go to the drawer where the measuring spoons are and, and come up with some number, but rather to go to the refrigerator and pull out an egg, pull out a middle-sized egg, and compare it to what I ate, to the size of the, of the cookies or the cake that I ate. That's what it seems to be saying. Um, sure enough, there's a there's a Chuvas Agonim that says not only is this what stems out of the Mishnah, this is the way Halakhalamaisa things should be done. Now, um, this Chuvas Agonim you should know, uh, it's quoted in the article, but in the article he quotes it uh, as something that the Chazanish brings. Um, so he says he says as follows. Uh, let's read the Chuva together. You ask about the shear of chala. What's a precise measurement? 
So he says, Vadai Shir Chala Mem Gimel Beitzim Vechomash Beitza. It is 43 eggs and a fifth. 43 and a fifth eggs. Ukinim Bavurish Beshmaitza Be'eruvin Be'per Ketza Mishtatvim as is explicit in the sugya in Eruvin. Ki Yasser Avdimi Tat Tat Tat. From that shear, you can see that the that the uh, the shear of a of that your chayav and chala again it would be relevant. Let's say the shear that you would make a bracha over, um, and uh, that you would be it would be considered uh, uh, tevel if you didn't take it off. So um, <clears throat> is forty three and a fifth eggs. Now, here are the key words, the black. Lachain. Lachain natnalanu ha Torah shiur ba beitzim u perot. Therefore, the Torah gave us the shiur, the amount in, in eggs and fruit. Shadiv, in honor of Tubishvat Der Chagat, which began already here. Uh, it's also my father in law's uh, yurt site. Uh, so, the Torah gave us the amounts in eggs and fruit, like like uh, like a, like an olive size, like a date size, like a like a fig size. Shedivrei sofrim al harsinai nitnu. The words of the sofrim. Now, the sofrim is chazal. We're given on Har Sinai. Now, this makes the most sense based on last week's year. Last week's year, we talked about the concept of Nimsar Hadavar Lachachomim, that there is this phenomenon in Halacha where HaKodesh Baruch Hu gave over certain things to be determined by the Rabbana. Uh, so that is legitimately something that was given on Mount Sinai. Uh, tov. Uh, eggs and fruit are all over the place. And is revealed to Kodesh Baruch Hu, the one who created the world. That Israel is in the future going to be scattered amongst the nations. And the weights and the measures that were in Moshe's time. And that there that were were added on during the times of the Chachamim in Eretz Yisrael. That's not going to be preserved. And there's different measures in different generations in different countries. And the Chachamim would renew the the measures. Like is clear in a number of places, and that's that's something that uh, the Gemara speaks about. Different uh, the the, uh, the Amma one, the Amma of one generation, the Amma of another generation, and um, okay. Now this seems uh, like it is not just that. Let's let's say the we'll say the Chakira. It's not just that. The there is a particular amount which is measurable in every generation, which is an objective, unchanging measurement that should be the same in Moshe's time, in uh, in Rabbi Akiva's time, in uh, in the Rashba's time, and in the Chavetz Chaim's time. Uh, some particular amount that would be measurable in whatever measures would be in every generation, that's wrong. That's not the case, says, says this, uh, this chuba. This chuba says, what's the size of a, of a, of a kibetza? The size of an egg. It's not that the beitza is identical to a particular measure. X uh x milliliters or or uh or x ounces no 
uh, or X drams or something else that might be in some other generation, whatever measures there were in all the different generations, that's inaccurate. Rather, the size is an egg. And so wherever, and, and why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu do that? Why did, why did, uh, and, you know, why did Chazal who, who, uh, who determined this, this, uh, this Dean Del Raisa, they were the ones that HaKadosh Baruch they were, so to speak, reading, reading Hashem's mind. So, uh, again, I, I, it's, un, it's not, it's not 100% clear. This could be, it could be that the Gonim here mean, when they say Direi Sofer and Sofer, just digressing for a moment. When he says Direi Sofer, it could be that he means literally Halach Lemoshim Sinai, meaning that this was a God-dictated uh, law. He doesn't necessarily have to be saying that. I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's necessary. So, um, but the Torah gave us eggs and fruit. And wherever you are, whenever you are measuring, you just pick up an egg, check it out, and that's enough. Um, now, that's, the, that's its approach. Uh, and uh, this is a very plausible approach with a very, with a very good explanation. And that's really... Um, what uh, the answer, the answer, I think, to Ashley, what you asked in the very beginning of this year, I think he's addressing this, this directly. Ha accessible shiurim were chosen because weights and measures, different, 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 uh, if you will, I'm using the word loosely, objective measurements, um, are going to change amongst the generations in the different countries. And that's not going to be something that Am Yisrael Lanetzach is going to be able to use. And, um, and so, and so, Beitzim and Peros, eggs and, and olives and, and, and dates and figs and, and beans, those are, uh, Transfer of all er, everywhere. Those are things that are going to always be able to be used. Now, that's the that's the uh, the the second thing I wanted to the 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 second thing I wanted to bring. Number one is uh, key source. Number one is the Mishnah and Kaling. Key source number two is the Chuvas Agon. Mishnah and Kaling tells us that the way to determine uh, and the size of a kibetza is by, according to Rabbi Yehuda, a median size egg. You take the biggest and the smallest and you come up with, with, uh, with what's in the middle. Whereas Rabbi Yossi says, you, you determine what is, a, what is an average size egg. And, and, and that's how you measure. Now, um, the third key source that is necessary for understanding the subsequent dispute about uh, about uh, halachic measurements is is the following gemara mitzvah, and we'll see what the what the um, what the great thing that happens in this in this gemara is. Amr Rabbi Yitzchak gets psachim kuf testament aleph. Amr Rabbi Yitzchak kista the maraisa the hava betzipore. He havas kemi luga the mikdasha. So there was a certain measure in Sipore, and that was uh, like the lug of the Beis Migdash. Now a lug is, uh, is, we're more familiar with the measure called a revis, which is a revis, a quarter of a lug. And from there, you divide that into four, and you're going to get to the revis of Pesach. Amr Rabbi Yochanan, Tamnaisa, Kadmaisa, the Hava Bateveria, there was another one that was that was uh, a quarter more, uh, the one in Tiberia, and that's the way you calculate the Rubis of Pesach. Okay, that's Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yitzchak. Now, uh, I brought this Gemara for Rabbi for Rabbi Chista. I'm Rabbi Chista. Rabbi Shel Torah, etzba'ayim al etzba'ayim, berum etzba'ayim v'chatzi etzba b'chomash etzba. 
Rab Chista says the Torah's revis is the following size. Two fingers by two fingers by a half, excuse me, by two fingers by two fingers, we're, we're creating a box uh, within which who's, a box whose size, a cube, uh, whose size is a, a revis. Meaning if you were to take uh, wine and fill up this cube, you will have a revis of wine. And that cube was going to be two fingers, two finger sizes. I'm not even saying width because we'll deal with that next week, God willing. There's two finger sizes. By two finger sizes, that's length and width. By height of two and a half and a fifth fingers. Now, he doesn't stop there. He, pro- he gets it from a Bryson. Rav is the Amora, is telling us how to calculate a Raviz, as opposed to Rav Yitzchak and Rav Yochanan, who gave us a particular measure that existed in a particular town in Tzipore or Tiberia. Rav Chista tells us, for all generations, how you can figure it out. Get two fingers by two fingers by two and a half and a fifth fingers, and, and fill that up, create a box that size, Fill it up and you'll have a revise. Kidetanya, like we say in a bright, so Varachat Bamayim is called the Saro. That's a pasuk about uh, Tahara and a mikvah. You, you wash, that means you toivel. That's what that means about Rachat. It doesn't mean clean, cleanse with water, but rather uh, toivel in water. Toivel your whole body in water. Shalo yehei davar chotzeitz bein besarol So there, there should be nothing, again, this is in Siddhartha first focus on this. So there should be nothing, uh, no barriers, nothing uh, uh, between you and the, and the, uh, and the water. No chatzitzas. B'mayim, in water. B'mayim mikvah. That's, that's uh, the waters of a mikvah. As kol b'saro, mayim shekol gufo olabahem. Enough water that will be enough for your whole flesh, meaning that your whole body should be able to go in, uh, go into. Meaning, the the berachatz uh, is called basaro tells us about the need to that the that the whole body comes in contact with the water. No chatzitzas. Bemayim tells us what the water should be like. It's water. It's may mikvah gathered rainwater. And as kol besaro tells us the size of that water. Shekol gufo olebhem. Enough water that your whole body could enter. Bekamahen. How much is that? Ama al ama barum shalosh amos. If you were to create a mikvah that has one ama by one ama by three amas and fill that with water, that's enough. And the Chachamim calculated that the amount of the waters of a mikvah, meaning that size, which is one by one by three amas, which comes from the Pasuk is called Besaro, because the water that you toy with has to be enough water that your whole body could enter. It has to be the kind of, it has to be an immersion, not just a washing. And so, uh, and, and that size is an ama by an ama by three amas. And the Chachamim uh, determined that that was 40 sa'a, which is a certain measure. Now, it sounds like Rav Chista got what he got from that brisa. Now, how did he do that? So, uh, and that's the, the calculation I like to do. Um, and it'll be... Uh, and, and we'll end with the calculation. I'll introduce the next step, which is going to be God willing next week's year, which will be the, the, the final stage. Um, Rav, um, Rav Chista saw that the size, the, the size of a mikvah is an ama by an ama by three amas. And you fill that with 40 saw. So he made the calculations that said, by the way, if you figure that out, you could, you could theoretically go from 40 saw and convert it in a way that you could figure out how much a is. 
because you would just do the, you would just follow these proportions and you would come up to, on a mini level, the amount that a Ravis would fill. Okay, now, why is this Gemara so important? Because before this Gemara came, before the Gemara in Pesachim Davkuv test came, the, we have a list of different shirin. And you'll notice there's, there's a group of shirin that are length shirin. Ama, tefach, mil, etc., etzba. And then there's a group of shirim that are volume shirim. A kibetza, a kezayit, a revius. So theoretically, those were all independent. And if you followed the tshuva sagaoni, you would say that uh, similar to the way when you when you want to know how much to, how much can I eat so that I'll I'll definitely have kedei svia I'll have a kibetzah so that I'll be able to make sure that I'm benching on a doraisa level so you would go get your egg and similarly to if you would want to uh, to to calculate uh, the height of a um, of a uh, of a mechitza of some partition, some some uh, wall, in order to determine uh, the eruv. So you would use tefachim and amas. You would use length measurements, and you you measure it with your arm, or you 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 uh, you get a tape measure, measure your arm, and then create some kind of a some kind of a, of a way of measuring. And one group of shirim are shirim of length. Another group of shirim are shirim of volume. And each one has something in the world that you can measure by. A hand, an arm, a finger, an olive, uh, an egg, a date, a fig, etc. But this Gemara does something, Rav Chizda does something revolutionary. He unites the shiurim of volume with the shiurim of length. And that's what the Pasuk does. That in Amma, by an Amma, by three Ammas, the Chachamim measured was our 40 Sa'ah. Rav Chista measured based on that, based on that, that Brisa about the mikvah, he made the calculation that a Raviz is two etzpas by two etzpas by, by two and a fifth and a, and a two and a half and a fifth etzpa. So he, he connected the volume measurements with the length measurements. Now, I'd like to, I'd like to follow through with the calculation. Um, and uh, I'd like to, I know there is a different way of figuring this out. What I want to do is I want to show how does it come, how do you go from the Brisa to Rav Chista's determination? So we go as follows. Uh, now, this is going to be a little mathematics. Uh, two etzbas by two etzbas by two and a half and a fifth etzba. Well, I figured, what's our, what's our smallest common denominator? Tenth of etzbas. So that's because to figure out a, uh, a half plus a fifth of an etzba, well, that's five tenths plus two tenths. So it ends up that this is going to be 20 tenths of fingers by 20 tenths of fingers, meaning your, your unit that we're going to measure with, and this is going to help us be able to calculate this, is the smallest common denominator, which is tenths of etzpas, tenths of fingers. So two fingers is 20 tenths of fingers. And by two by two by 27 tenths. Because two etzbas plus a half, which is five tenths, plus a fifth, which is two tenths, that ends up with seven tenths. So that's 27 tenths. So a revius is 20 tenths of etzbas by 20 tenths by 27 tenths. Okay. Now, what about the mikvah? Let's calculate the mikvah in tenths of etzbas also. Well, it's one amma by one amma by three ammas. Well, one amma is six tfachim. That's a hand breath. One tevach is four fingers. 
And so it ends up that every ama is 64 fingers. So an ama, which is now 64 fingers, is 24 fingers. Sorry, sorry, I don't know why I said 64. Every ama is 24 fingers. Well, once again, that's 240 tenths of fingers because what we want to do, the sheet that we're going to do, we're going to figure out, we're going to show how how Rav Chister's calculation works out is we're going to, we're going to break everything down to the lowest common denominator, which is tenths of etzbas. And so we're going to take the, uh, the mikvah measurement and the revius measurement and calculate everything in, in one unit, which is tenths of etzbas. Well, how many tenths of etzbas is, is an ama, uh, is an ama? 240 tenths of etzbas because it's 24 etzbaot. And each et and each et has ten tenths, so it's two hundred and forty tenths. And then a mikvah is two hundred and forty tenths of etzbas, which is an ama, by two hundred and forty tenths of etzbas, which is an ama, by seven hundred and twenty tenths of etzbas, which is three amas, and that's that's going to be able to be filled with forty saw. Which is the size, which is the amount of water that fills the mikvah. A ravi says Rav Chista, from there Rav Chista was able to extract the following 20 tenths of etzbas by 20 tenths of etzbas by 27 tenths of etzbas is a ravi. Now, what I like to do is show you how, using the way we would calculate things nowadays, you would be able to, or, 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 or I learned in math class, you would be able to calculate from the size of a mikvah to get to the size of a ruiz. Well, you're gonna to have to now, the same way we took the, the uh, length measurements and we brought them down to their, their lowest common denominator, which is tenths of etzbas, and we, we, we described the whole thing in tenths of etzbas. So similarly, by the, by the volume measurements, we're also going to have to, we're going to have to go from 40 saw, we want 40 saw and one revis to be described in the same unit. Well, one saw is six kavi. That's a measure. One kav is four lugi. That's a measure. One lug, of course, is four revis because a revis, the revis means a quarter of a loaf. Well, then it ends up that every saw is 96 Reviyot, 96 quarters, because it's, it's four times four times six. Well, then 40 saw is going to be a grand total of 3,840 Reviyos. I just take 96 times 40. So now we have all the volume measurements in Reviyos's, Reviyot, that's the lowest common denominator, and all the length measurements in tenths of etzbas, which is the lowest common denominator. Well, now if we set up an equation, an equation, it's going to be easy to figure out how Rav Chista got what he got. Because a revius is 20 by 20 by 27 cubic tenths of an etzba. And 40 saw is 240 by 240 by 720 cubic tenths of an etzba. Well, how much is that? Well, 20 by 20 by 27 cubic tenths of an etzba is going to be 10,800 cubic tenths etzbaos. It's about. Whereas 3,840 reviot, the way we calculate it, because remember, 40 saw we, we measured was 3,840 3, reviot, is 240 by 240 by 720 tenths of etzbaos, which comes to a grand total of 41 million. 472,000 cubic tenths of its power. So now, uh, if you, you can take Rav Chista's tiny little box and see it in, in, these, in these micro units of tenth etzba by tenth etzba by tenth etzba, and see a whole mikvah in those same units of tenth etzba by tenth etzba by tenth etzba. Well, now it should be easy for us to be able to calculate how much Rav it is. Because if we just take 41,472,000 divided by 3,840, 3, we should be able to get the size of one Ravid. And sure enough, it works out. Because 
41, 47 to 472,000 divided by 3,840 3, is 10,800. So uh, that's how Rav Chista, if he was using our, the way we usually make calculations nowadays, that's the way he would have figured out how much one, one, one would be. He would have, he would have uh, come up with, uh, again, for our sake, we wanted, we, we simply had to, uh, see how many reviot there are, are in a mikvah, and then uh, how many cubic tenth etzbaot there are in a mikvah, and then in order to get to one revit, divide that whole thing by 3,840, and sure enough, it works out to 10,800, which is 20 by 20 by 27. So that's how he knew that uh, that a revise is two etzbos by two etzbos by two and a half and a fifth etzbos. The way in my in our language, twenty tenths of etzbos by twenty tenths of etzbos by twenty seven tenths of etzbos. Okay. Now that's the um, that's the last um, last stage of today's calculations. Now. I want to set us up for, for God willing, next week's year. The we painted a very simple picture of using of calculating shimon. You simply um, pick up an egg and calculate how much a bait is. You pick up an olive. You pick up you you, you calculate how much a gazayis is. That's following Rabbi Yossi in the Mishnah. We do have another Gemara though that tells us. Uh, how to figure out how much a revise is. And because a, a log is not a uh, is not a familiar thing. A log is one of those kinds of abstract measurements like a pint or a quart or a milliliter, etc. It's a log. It's not something you go find in nature. You can't just go, so what did Rav, what did Rav Chista do for us? He translated it into accessible measurement, which is etzbaot, meaning you don't, you don't have to rely on a certain, uh, the, the standard that is in Sipori or the standard that is in Tiberia Rather, anybody anywhere could figure out how much a revise is. All he has to do is if he's got fingers, so he can use his fingers. And if he calculates two by two, the next one's going to be a little more fine measurements, but two and a half and a, and a fifth of an etzba, he's going to be able to figure out how much a revise is. And that anybody can do anywhere, even if you're far away from Tiberia or Tsipori or, or, uh, or anybody who has a, 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 a duplicate of those a replica of those of those measurements. So what Rav Chista told us is uh, a way of a way of of using accessible measurements to figure out the unaccessible measurements. Okay, what we're going to find out next week was the was something we mentioned once when we uh, when we learned about the Note of Yehuda, the Note of Yehuda's experiment, which forced him into rethinking the whole topic of, of, uh, of Shirin. What we're going to discuss next week is uh, the, the note of Yehudas Chiddush, his experiment, his Talmud of Laser Fleckel's uh, reaction, and then how different uh, Meforshim throughout the, the, the generations um, uh, dealt with it. Yeah, and so... Uh, this will impact also on on how much a kazai is. Yes, kazai. Okay. Um, be well. This is what I wanted to share with you today.